I'm literally walking in a winter wonderland. Look, number three, yeah. So today I'm just gonna explore the Calgary Zoo and just go from there. Um, since I work and have a membership at another zoo that's AZA accredited, I was able to get into this zoo for 50% off, which only cost me 12 US dollars. So that was pretty great. It is so nice outside. Yeah, it's actually really nice outside. I'm impressed. And I mean, it's chilly, but it's not like freezing like it was when I went yesterday to uh, Lake Louise and Banff, so it's pretty nice. It's so beautiful to be at a zoo that just has natural snow freaking everywhere. Like, look at this. Oh my gosh, wow, I didn't even realize there was literally one laying down right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, as I'm walking up to the moose, does anybody else who watched Hannah Montana ever like associate moose with the scene in one of the episodes where Lily's like, in Canada, where the moose are? Like, does anybody else associate that? Associate moose with um, Hannah Montana? Because I do. That's my childhood for you. Anyways, I finally found the moose in Canada, where the moose are. Of course, none of them are looking at me right now. Huge. Oh, sweet little thing. Something's wrong with its little back leg. These freaking alpacas. I can't. Way too cute. Okay, I am currently in a conservatory, like greenhouse, and the theme is Harry freaking Potter. Rabbit ball, Grossendor, 
I'm it, my I can't tell if my lens is foggy or if it's my screen. I think it's my lens. Yeah, it's kind of my lens. Maybe or slotherin or hippo puff. That's that's me. Hippo puff. And the floating oh you can't see. The floating candles. Oh this greenhouse is it's way too hot. Yeah, my camera's fogging up. That's how freaking humid it is in here. Oh my god. <gasps> Hold up. Look at this. I wanted to see dinosaurs. Um, guess I'm not going to because it's closed. So that ends my time at the zoo. It's fun. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. So here we go. Here's today's look. Let's go look at some wolf dogs. I'm currently in co Cochrane. I think that's like Cochrane maybe? I know it's not Cochrane. <laughs> I know it's not that. Aspen is hanging out in the back because he's definitely the most submissive of this pack. Okay. Um, Grizz is the most dominant when there's food around and you can tell just because of how, how big he is and how up front and center he is. Yeah. Quinn is the smallest. She's the only female and she's the runt of the litter. Um, but don't feel too sorry for her. She bosses <laughs> her brothers around all the time when there's no food. So the pack structure here is generally... Aspen's always going to be the most submissive and these two are going to be... Yeah. Um, very conditionally dominant, depending on what's happening. got a little bit more uh, wolf in him. He's what's known as an upper mid. Uh, now he's usually one that hogs the Christmas tree. So we'll see if he's in the mood for coming to get it today. You're gonna notice that these guys are very fearful. <laughs> still quite sure about it. They're still very curious. This sort of activity is great for getting their brains working. Uh, they really have to build up the courage before they can come close to the tree. If you guys do have any questions at any point, please feel free to shout them out. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just watch Enzo. <laughs> How old are they? So, still pretty young. Um, Ruby is... Whoosh, must be five or so by now, I think. Uh, and Enzo is a little bit older. Uh, I think he's like six-ish. <laughs> How did you get them? So, um, <coughs> Enzo came to us as an ambassador animal, so he was sort of uh, transferred from another organization to us. Okay. Ruby here though, Ruby came to us uh, from a pretty nasty situation. Basically she was bred a few miles from here, uh, then sold to somebody in Newfoundland. She was sort of shipped over there uh, in a crate on her own. The owner picked her up, 
uh, and then found out a couple weeks later it's actually completely illegal to own a wolf dog in Newfoundland. So if anybody found out, Ruby would have been put down. So what had to happen is they contacted us and we were able to get her back over here. But the breeder had lied on her sort of forms to get her across the border, said she was a pure husky. Um, so he knew that it was illegal and he was totally okay with her being put down and just wanted to make the money. And that's unfortunately pretty common with wolf dogs. They're really not treated well. And these guys are pretty much treated as a way for people to make money. So yeah, she's pretty traumatized from that whole experience. Even when we brought her back, we had to smuggle her across the border, technically. Um, so, pretty tough life that she has had. Um, and that's why she is quite fearful. She tends to stay in the background like that uh, for these sorts of activities. So are all of them spayed and neutered? They are, yes. Uh, we don't want to contribute to the problem, you know. Uh, the reason we exist is because there are so many wolf dogs out there without a home. These guys are really badly treated, <laughs> and we just want to give these guys a nice place to live out the rest of their lives. So if we start breeding, we're taking up spaces that could be used for rescues. This cutie is sleeping. goats here too and some roosters hi you're staring right into my soul <laughs> um, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to feed the pizza here through the fence first off if I was to go in there, she'd knock me on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. So I'm going to feed her to the fence and then I'll pop. <laughs> 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 She's just screaming. Woo! Oh, damn. Oh, what is that? Is that <laughs> Where are we going? Where's it going? Oh, my God. I'm oh, you're going to go. Yeah. Don't try and steal it. Come on, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so scent rolling is something that our guys mostly just do for fun. It's quite a bit of fun for them. Hopefully they will do it for you guys and you'll see how much fun they have with it. Um, but it's something that wolves will actually do for a form of communication. So um, a wolf could roll in something that is of interest to them and they could go back to the pack. The pack could sniff them up and down and they could get some form of information from that. So when our animals do it, it's mostly just instinctual. They just can't help themselves. When a domestic dog does it, it is also instinctual. Just domestic dogs don't typically do it on just about anything that's new to them. Domestic dogs usually do it on dead fish and poop, which we don't want our dogs to roll in. But it is the same idea. They would roll in that as well. Um, but it is the same idea of it just being an instinctual thing that they're like, ooh, what is the smell? I'm going to roll in it. <laughs> TK was just rolling on his back. Was he really? Yeah, yeah, that would have been some scent rolling on something. Who knows what? <laughs> Okay, guys, so we're going to toss each of their pieces in. I even have some icing on this orange peel. <laughs> hey, you, don't put it in your mouth. You're not going to like it. Trust me. <laughs> All right, we'll let them investigate those. They're going to well, take a little taste. In his mouth, then. Oh, what a weirdo. There's Kayda. <laughs> TK likes to try everything. <laughs> yes, we got it. <laughs> You're not gonna set roll, you weirdo. Kate is gonna put set roll on your other one. <laughs> <laughs> You're not into it today because you already set roll. That's okay. You can see how much fun Kate is having. <laughs> there he goes. He <laughs> couldn't resist. <laughs> I love when they get into it so much that they're not even rolling on the scent anymore, they're just rolling. <laughs> so you'll notice that the main area that they roll on it is right kind of on the side of their neck. Um, not only do they have scent glands that they can really get that smell in there, but it's also where they can hold the most scent because it's the thickest part of their coats. 
So they will want to carry as much scent as they can. So that's where they'll typically kind of roll with it. <laughs> and it just never gets old. I've seen them do this so many times and it just brings a big smile to your face. So what kinds of oils did you put on? The so what I actually had on there, I had, so the orange pill on its own, sometimes we'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, I also put a bit of, I think it was like a gingerbread icing. Um, and then I think I probably had a couple other little things on there. Honestly, when it comes down to it, we just take all the random things we have and just mix it all together and make some kind of concoction. <laughs> and they usually go to town on it. <laughs> Pushing off against the tree. <laughs> you guys, it just keeps switching off. I've been here all day and I don't plan on leaving until like the last activity because you can pay for a tour and then just stay for the whole day. So that's kind of what I did. Um, I'm waiting for one of the activities where I could possibly get to meet um, a wolf dog like actually in person. So that'll be exciting. But this place is so cool. I'm just like look at Yeah, so it's really chill, relaxed. I came here like basically when they opened, did a tour, got to feed a wolf dog, and then I've just been walking around kind of just enjoying the view and like reading every little thing they have on each wolf dog. They have 20, 26 wolf dogs here at the sanctuary and all of them have either been neglected or they were raised thinking people could have them as pets and then people realized they couldn't actually take care of them or they were completely rescued from breeders because breeding is a thing and then there's like some that are really wool or like high content mid content low content as far as how much wolf is in them um, and so yeah kind of just learning a lot but these creatures are so pretty and also the gift shop has um the gift shop has a dog that just hangs around and that one is a dog it's not a wolf dog it has a giant dog i think it's a mar marmoset mar marmite that kind of i don't know how to say it Ooh, um that kind of dog the gift shop has one just lingering he's really old and he loves to be pet and then there's like an irish something like that that's also roaming around up there in the front and that one doesn't like to be petted as much but it's giant oh my gosh it's almost as tall as me like that's pretty crazy got the ice cream but um I just got no maybe maybe too bright yeah I don't know I just got ice cream from this place called made by Marcus and I'd compare it to Reyes in San Marcos or Reyes Reyes however you say it like gourmet fashion ice cream it was pretty good and also I was skeptical about getting ice cream in 37 degree weather but it actually feels great eating the ice cream right now. 
and um, yeah and it was pretty cheap for like one scoop yeah one scoop is two scoops if you split it in half and so I got whiskey hazelnut praline which is delicious and a coffee campfire s'mores which is also delicious and together even better